Hello, this is Jackson from AWayRun.com. If you're a reader on SRK, Twitch TV, or Justin TV, you may have recently heard that I just updated my XSplit panel writer to version 1.4. Now, many of you have already been using my previous versions, and my previous versions have all been uh, made and released for free, and they will remain for free on the Internet. Uh, there are lots of places you could find them. I'm not going to go into those URLs right now. But uh, one of the things you may have also heard is version 1.4 is no longer free. Uh, I'm charging a $10 premium, and uh, I'm making this video to explain why. That and because Hell Green, one of the people on the XSplit support team, asked to see a video tutorial. So I'm making it. I figure I'm charging for this version. Let me try to get a bit more customer support. So showing you guys how this program works to and what has changed in previous versions. As I said, 1.2 and previous versions are still, going to be are still going to be made available out there for free. So uh, if you want to download them, try them out before you try out 1.4, that's perfectly fine. Now when you do download the program, at least 1.4, you're going to get a series of files and folders. Folders uh, are the data folders, images folders, and output folders. And what happens is you'll see that the image folder and the output folder look identical, right? That's actually wrong. The images folder has blank images. There's no text on these images, while the output folder has images with text on them. And I'll explain how they work in a, in a moment. For now, I'm going to look at the data folder. Data folder has a series of text files. These text files help populate the information that's in these uh, drop-down boxes by default. So I have uh, four event fields, four text files, a game round, players field, header, and summary fields. Now, anything that's added to these text files, the next time I open the program up, will automatically be added to these drop-down menus. Or anything that's added to the drop-down menus will automatically be added to the text files when I close the program. It's an easy way to restore information, such as you're doing multiple events, you don't want to keep retyping stuff, so it'll store that information. For instance, with players, lots of players, they keep on coming around, so as you add players, they'll get added to the drop-down, and you'll be able to select from them instead of having to type them down each time. Now, for events, for text files, Game, games, round, rounds, player one, player two, players. What you'll notice is there are not two player files. That's because these two text fields, these drop down fields, they share the same information. That's what makes it very easy to swap players very, uh, with a click of a button. Swapping players will also swap the scores. And reset scores will reset the scores. And you'll notice any time a text field change changes, the uh, appropriate save button will glow red. It's telling you, hey, you haven't saved, you need to click save. Now there's two ways to save. You can click save. Now clicking save will only save the item that's dependent on the screen you're on. So if I click save on events, it'll only update the event image. If I click save on lower one, it'll only update lower one. Lower two, lower two. But Smatch Titles actually has two different images. It has Match and Score. And when you click Save, it'll update both these images. But there's also another way to save, and that's by simply using Control-S on your keyboard. So if I were to swap players, Control-S, and it's saved. But Control-S doesn't save just the screen you're on. Control-S saves all images in the program, so that is a bit more resources. It's really depending on uh, what you're trying to do, and uh, you know what's more convenient because control s is very easy to hit now going into these images we were, I was talking about blanks and so what happens is let's look at lower one blank now lower one blank is a well it's just lower one dot png but it is, my, it is my blank image it has no text on it if we go to the about tab and click on settings you can see that the lower one image is looking for the lower one blank from the XSplit images folder. And what it does is it takes the text in these lower one fields and saves it to an image called lower one.png in the 
image file output directory, which we are calling export output. Now, you'll, you'll not want to use the same folder for your input image sources and your output directories because then you end up writing your, your uh, blanks, overwriting your blanks, and you don't want to overwrite your blanks. So if I click Save, well, let's swap text to show that it's saved, and then go to the output directory and look at lower one, you can see it added text to the image. And I can click Swap Text, and now it's going to update the image and have new text. Another thing you'll see here are these ellipses buttons. The ellipses buttons are available for every text field. And this lets you actually change the uh, details of the text. The font, the style, the size, the typeface, the horizontal alignment, and the center alignment. So if I wanted to say, let's make that orange, and let's make that uh, strike out, move the text to the left, and change the font to Comic Sans. Now let's keep it centered just for looks nicer. Click Save, and you'll see, hey, look at that. We changed the com Comic Sans. It's orange, and there's Strike Through. That's actually pretty ugly, so let's never use that font ever again. It's pretty bad. Now it also has a default text field. This is the text that's going to appear every time you start up the program. You can change it to whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. You'll also notice over here a square box. And in the square box, it has a series of integer fields. This is the X position of your text. This is the Y position of your text. This is the height. And this is the length of your text. And what happens is these, the output images, the resolution of the output image is dependent on the resolution of your input image. So my input blank for lower1.png was 1280 by 720, your very basic 720p size. So my output image is 720p in size. If I wanted to change the dimensions of my output image, I would need to simply change the dimensions of my input image. And what these numbers do is they let you move the, the, the position of the text field. So if I say, I don't want um, this text field for, comment for commentator 1 to appear from 0 to 570. I'm going to make it from, uh, da, 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 let's say, 300 to 870. Because as I said before, the 570 here is not the right position of the text field. It is the length of the position. So 300 plus 570 is 870. Click Save and the commentator field has been moved 300 pixels to the right. Move that back. And of course you can do the same thing with the vertical position. So let's move it 10 pixels down and now it's 10 pixels down compared to commentator 2 as you can see over there. And as I said before, the, these, this combo setting is for every single text field. So you can move every text field however you want on the field, uh, on your images, as well as change their font settings, their alignment, their styles. Very easy to edit. And the reason why we do this with images instead of just doing simple text files or uh, text titles on XSplit, because those text titles are really hard to, uh, to update. They're pretty bad. They're pretty poorly put together. And they're not really designed for constant updating, especially if you stream things like tournaments. You need to be able to change people's names, update scores on the fly. And that's what all this stuff does very conveniently, even lets you change the round. Now, let's go back into settings, and we'll look at the other settings available. The data files, you can put those data files anywhere you want. But generally, the image sources and output directories options, all these options here, I can't fathom a reason you'd ever really want to change them. So just leave it by default. I put the options there just in case, but you really don't need to, so don't. The other options are always on top and snap to edges. Pretty self-explanatory. Always on top will make it so that you can never click away from the panel. It's always on top no matter where you click. It's always on top of your screen. And snap to edges, drag, and it snaps to the edge of my screen. Makes it very convenient to align wherever you want it to be. 
Now let's go into the reason why I'm not charging for 1.4, and that would be this nice Twitch TV panel. The Twitch TV panel actually uses uh, open authentication, which is what Justin TV uses to uh, authenticate their API. And this works very similar to the way XSplit works. You simply click sign in, and it's going to pop up your browser. Give it a moment. Oh, I've already signed in before, so let's sign up for now. Sign in, pop up the browser. And what happens is if you're logged into Justin TV, it's going to say, uh, eight-way run panel writer is requesting permission to access and update your account. If you're not logged into Justin TV, it'll have a login form where you'll need to log in before you grant access. And you want to grant the program access because accessing your account is what it's going to do. So I click grant access. Justin TV is uh, okay there. Now I've granted access. And you'll notice that the authorize button is now available to be clicked. So I click it. And now I am logged into my account. And so what happens is if I go to my Twitch TV page, you'll see that it drew my status directly from the status field. So I can say, you know what, later today I'm going to play The Witcher Enhanced Edition. And I click Update Status. It polled. The poll went. So now it says OK. And the update status has turned gray instead of red. If I refresh the page, you'll see that my status has been updated. But now you're wondering, hey, it still says 8-Way Run is playing Skrull Girls. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for the program to update what game you're currently playing. Twitch TV does not actually have an open API. It's just in TV that has an open API. So I can only really edit the features that are available universal to Justin TV and Twitch. And the what game you're currently playing feature is a Twitch TV feature not available on Justin, so it's not part of Justin's op open API. Hopefully in the future, Twitch TV will uh, add that feature. Maybe, and I'm hoping they're watching this video and saying, we really want that feature. So uh, let's get it into the next version. Tell Twitch you want it. And then I'll see what I can do for the future. The other thing you'll see on this panel, very convenient run commercial button. Run commercial button is pretty simple. You click run commercial, and it runs a commercial. Now, I'd show you an example of this, but I'm not actually streaming right now. So you're not going to see any commercials. But I assure you, if you're streaming and you click the run commercial button, it's going to run the commercial. What you also have here is a timer. The timer will count down depending on what you set it to. So just for the sake of example, I'm going to say set it to one minute. Now, there's also a run automatic commercials button. Uh, when, if you have run automatic commercials set, when the timer reaches one minute, it's going to automatically run the commercial. And this is convenient for, like me, I have a 24-7 stream. I say I want it to run the commercial automatically every 30 minutes. And I have the timer set to 30 minutes. I have run com automatic commercials. And every 30 minutes, a commercial is automatically run on my channel. But now our one-minute timer is about to be hit. So let me switch to another panel and show you what happens when the timer counts down, or counts up, actually. And what you see is there's now a red icon on the Twitch TV panel. It's saying, hey, you haven't run a commercial in a while. Maybe you should get back and run a commercial so you keep on making your money. And of course, as you can see, the run commercial button is also red to tell you, hey, you haven't run a commercial. So click run commercial, timer starts over, icon disappears, and it'll turn red again when the timer reaches one minute or 30 minutes, which I'm going to set here. Run commercial, I already explained what that does, so uh, let's move on from that. Now, if you like what I showed you, very easy to buy the program. If you head to the XSplit forums, you can actually head to, let's go to the base index. Head to the XSplit forums, you'll find the forums for developers. You can click on the link for XSplit Panel Writer program right over here. And if you want to download the free version, simply click the link on the, on the first uh, post. It will bring you to the post with the free version. The free version also has images of the free version, which as you can see look fundamentally different 
than the paid version. It's taller, it's a bit bigger, it's not as streamlined. But at the bottom, it'll have a link for the free version and the pro version. If you don't want to do that, you can see the URL to the pro version right here at poll.ly slash b slash 3788. This link can also be found below the video, and it's $10. And of course, after you buy it, you still want to donate, I do accept donations. Thank you for your time. I hope you at least give the free version a try. And if you like it, I hope you get the pro version. I spent a lot of time on this program. So um, thank you.